All right, here's the first scramble. And just keep in mind that as we go through this, I'm not always doing the best things because I'm not like a world-class two by two solver at all. All right, so here we have three pieces of white already done, pretty easy. This one I'm going to insert into here. And I could do it with R U prime R prime, which will end up having a blue bar right here. And I'm gonna wanna hold that bar on the back, which means I'll have to do a cube rotation. So instead of doing that, uh, which by the way, would have ended up with one of the easiest EG1 cases, I instead did it from this angle, U prime, and then insert the corner, R prime, U prime, R. And what that means is it's harder to one look because it's four moves, but it does mean I save a cube rotation. So I knew that this one was going to move over and then inserting the corner doesn't affect this piece. Uh, so this one was going to stay right here. Then I saw that this one was going to just move over like a U2. And lastly, I traced this one, which was going to, I just look at the yellow one first, it's gonna move over to here and then move up to here. And I also noticed that blue is gonna move over here and then up to here. So if you trace three pieces, you can just be smart and be done and recognize exactly what case that's gonna be. But unfortunately, I'm not that good at that yet. So what I did for the scramble is I also traced the one at the back and I knew it was gonna come over here. And so I ended up with this case. And so how I recognize that particular case is I see red is gonna be here, red is here, and blue is back here. So um, I did that. And then the way I execute this case, uh, just an interesting thing to note is that the way I execute this has a cube rotation. So it ended up having a cube rotation anyway in a slightly worse case. So I just thought that was interesting. I tried to be smart and I ended up doing something worse. So here's the next ramble, and again, I started off really lucky with three of green already done, so I just insert this one. The bar is already at the back, and clearly there's no bar here, so that means there's only going to be a bar at the back. And so all I have to do is see that this one, again, the one directly behind the corner, is not going to move. This one is going to move over just one spot, so I'm going to have a bar back here, and I just look at what they are. They're both white. And then lastly, I see this one is going to move up and over with red on top. And that's enough to trace out the whole case. I know that these two are gonna be opposites and white's gonna be both here at the back. And so I just do the EG case for that. All right, for this scramble, starting off easy again, we have three of yellow. And I like that we're kind of moving up the levels as we go here. Uh, so what I did for this one was I noticed that this one being on top can either pair together with this one like that and reinsert or it can pair up with this one over here like that. So uh, the one I chose was this one, and that's because if I paired up with this one, I just look at what else I have. I have these two that are going to be opposite, and these are going to be opposite as well, which will mean I'll have a diagonal layer at the bottom, which means I have to do anti-CLL, which is slower than EG1, uh, because I don't know EG2. So if you're using anti-CLL, you'll try to avoid it if you have the opportunity to do so. Here, I joined these two together, and the bar, here, how I track the bar is that this one, I just imagine these two paired up here like, like this. So it's gonna be green on front and that's gonna to go to the back. So green bar at the back here. So no rotation afterwards. Once I do this, I know that these two are going to stay right here because I'm gonna do L2, U, L2, and those, those will stay there. And this one will move over one. So really it's super easy to trace. This one is gonna have red both here and then I'm gonna have blue up here. So this is actually the same case as last time and then EG1. So in this scramble, I have this white bar here. So I really quickly fixated on white to see if it was an okay case and turned out it is. So the way I do this case is I will insert one of them like this and have a twisted corner. And then from here, I imagine this move having already been done. So I just use the twisted corner trick, which is that above the twisted corner, the two pieces here are not going to move. And these two, this one is gonna move over this way, and this one is gonna move over that way. So this one's gonna move over like L prime, that, that'll be its final position. This one move, will move over like U prime, so that'll be its final position. So here, uh, you only really need to look at one of them because you can see the other two, but uh, essentially what I'm gonna get is an H case, headlights here, and bar and no bar. So that's what I did, and before I did that, I made sure to track what uh, the bottom is gonna be like. Here, once I do this, it's gonna be red, and these are opposites, opposites. So I'm gonna have an anti-CLL case. So the whole solution was like this, and then this case. And then to execute this anti-CLL case, I just imagine the bars on the other side instead. And then L2, B2, L2. Well, because I'm lefty. All 
All right, so for this scramble, I ended up choosing yellow because I quickly saw this and this, how they can pair up like that and reinsert down into here. Orange turns out is better than what I did. It's one, two, three. Uh, so, however, I don't always choose the best one because I am always very low in inspection time. So here's what I did uh, for yellow. I did U prime R, U prime R2, and then rotate to put the bar at the back because I'm not advanced enough to not be doing that. For tracing the top layer, I notice that we're gonna have this and this, I trace them together. So if you just uh, imagine where the white one's gonna go, then uh, this one is going to move over and then up while this one moves to the back. So they'll be like this, and then they'll be like this. So they'll, they'll be here at the end with green here and blue here. All right, then the last one, I only need to track one more. Um, usually, sometimes I track four, but usually I just need to track three, and that's gonna be this one. So I don't wanna deal with like this one at the bottom, although I could, it only moves by R prime, but I just ended up tracking this one because I found it easier. It moved by U prime and then R, R2, which is just U prime, R prime. So this is going to be green on top with white on the side here. And so with this CLL, you should be able to recognize what the last one is going to be. And it's gonna be double bars. So I did this, rotate and double bars. So for the scramble, there's white here with these two, and this is a pretty good case, but I noticed green first, that green had this and this, which is actually a pretty good pattern if you know how to deal with it. So um, what I did was uh, first I had to choose whether I want to insert this one first like that, or whether inserting this one first like that would be better. And I noticed that by inserting this one first, I get a diagonal bottom, which is not good. So if I do this instead, I'll get a bar right here, which is better because I don't know EG2. So. Uh, I did U, R, and then insert this pair. So U prime, R, U, R prime. Now tracing through all of that is really, really hard in 15 seconds, but how I managed to do it was with the trick with that is these two in the top layer, whenever you get this specific pattern of their facing opposite sides diagonal from each other, the two on top are going to be preserved. So after doing the U, then this is the part where uh, I remember these two are not going to move anymore. Then all I have to do is track at least one more for this one. R puts it here, U prime puts it here, and then it stops moving when you do this insertion because it's behind the corner, this corner will be here. When you have the piece behind the corner as you insert, it's not going to move. So as this one moves up and over, then you can pretty easily see this blue is gonna be on top and orange is gonna be here. All right, so since this one's facing this way, this is going to be a U case with the blues here, and then these two will be orange, these two will be red, and the bar is going to be on this side. So I did that and then rotated, and then EG1. All right, for this scramble, it was pretty obvious I was gonna go with either yellow or blue. So just quickly looking at blue, it is actually the exact same solution as yellow. They have the same case. So I just ended up picking yellow. I don't even know if I noticed blue. So what I did was I noticed this bar over here is gonna be on the right and I'm going to insert this. This one is gonna come like that and not be a bar. So I'm gonna have an EG1 case. And this one cancels into inserting this one into the back. So how I did it was L2, U, L prime. And so tracing pieces here is actually really easy for this case. Uh, this one is gonna move over. This one is gonna move down. And if you just imagine it, just I talked about it before, when you insert corners here, the one behind it doesn't move. So the first L is the last way this piece is going to move. This one is going to move by U L prime. So I have this right now, although I also mentioned earlier, I can't use these three to recognize. Um, I will work on it eventually, but right now I can't. So I track the last one as well, and we're gonna have the last one be orange on top back here. I already knew what OLL was gonna be, so I was just looking for what is, is on top, because the first three told me which OLL it's gonna be already. So orange, orange, blue, rotate, and this is the case. All right, for this solve, uh, again, we have a few bars here that we can use, just quickly looking at blue. If we do this, we end up with this one, and this is actually a pretty good case. Don't know why I didn't do it. Um, we also have green here. Green is four moves, where you can pair up these two and then join them alongside those. Also pretty good. I think what I ended up doing was yellow uh, because I noticed this pattern right away, and I noticed that this is also not a bad pattern, so I immediately went for it anyway. Um, so again, I'm usually low in inspection time, so I just pick the first one that I know how to one look. So for this case, 
Um, how I do it, first of all, is I will do U prime and then insert this, but then on the way in, just do a U prime to insert this one as well. So U prime, R prime, U prime, R prime. Uh, I ended up executing it from this angle from the last second, but I was inspecting from this side. So I'll just show you how I inspect from this side. Um, I have some things memorized for this one. I know, I know that this one is going to move over by a U2. So this is its final location. And I know this one is going to corner twist outwards. So this one is going to have white on here, blue here, and so on. So just looking for one more here. Uh, this one, I just traced it. It's going to go here and then here. So it's gonna be white this way with red. So green, blue, red, this is a pi case. The last one has to be red as well. So that's how I recognized it. And then because I kind of forgot to trace what the bottom layer was gonna be because I'm very bad at this, I realized that we're gonna have a bar in front, which is actually not good. So I last second switched it around and did this. And so here is my case. So for the scramble, I did yellow. Um, I saw that this one would go in right away here, making three of a layer, and then this one would go in here. And uh, even though this is five moves to insert that all, after inserting this one, it's a common case I run into to insert the last corner. So I found this to be pretty easy. So after inserting this, then I just do the regular tracking for this corner, which is like the one behind it is not going to move. So this one's gonna end up back here and then this one is going to move over and then back and then down. So this one will move just kind of like an R prime. And uh, this one will not move. It will stay here because I do U prime followed by U later. And then that could be enough. But lastly, I also track this one. This one's pretty easy. It just moves up and over. So I knew that this was going to be blue, orange, green, the way I usually recognize it. And then just into CLL. So for the scramble, we have yellow, red, and white. And just looking at red, this already looks kind of bad. So I didn't really look at red. And I think the next one I looked at was probably yellow. So yellow had this and this, which is a very nice pattern. All you have to do is insert this one with R2, but on the way in, insert this. So R prime, U, R prime. All right, so tracing where the pieces go, this one is just gonna move to the back. This one was gonna move over and then down. So white on the front and red on top. And then this one was going to go to the back with um, red on top. I don't, you don't really have to like trace. You just kind of see white here. And if you do a double move, then red here is going to end up on top. If you do single moves, then um, the one in the bottom doesn't end up on top. That's just like how I usually keep track of it. All right, so I noticed that this one's gonna have orange at the back. And then we have two reds on top here for the T case. So I already know what case that's going to be. So then just do that. I think I messed up while I was doing that. And then EG1. For this scramble, we have a green bar and a red bar. And if you just quickly look at green, this does not look good at all. This pattern generally, um, I try to avoid it. I will only go to this as a last resort. So for red, I notice that I can pair these two together like that, and then bar here, bar here. So this is gonna make a layer at the end. So the solution is L prime, U prime, L2. And so then tracing through the pieces, I notice that this one's just gonna move over. This one's gonna move up and over. So I have orange up and over here. And then here's gonna be white with orange on the back. And then these two back here are just going to do like an L cause they do L prime and then L2. So these, I kind of just visualize them moving down. So then the stickers I usually use to recognize, I'll just show them there. It is going to be white, white, green. So then CLL. All right, this solution, even though I did it in four seconds, I knew exactly what it was going to be. I'm just very bad at this algorithm. So uh, this also has a special trick involved in it. So what I noticed was the red bar here and I have this pattern. Now this pattern is not the best, but it is pretty easy to one look. So what you do, which I show in my one look tricks video is you do L prime like this. And what that does is it sets it up into this case, the two opposite direction facing case. And if you know how to do this one, then you'll realize this is actually one of the easiest cases to one look. So coming back to here, um, once I imagine this in my head, then these two are going to stay on top once I finish this layer, uh, which is going to be by inserting this into the back and then inserting this one into the front. So these two staying here, all I really have to recognize is one more piece, and that's going to be this one. This one, in fact, is just going to do L prime, U, 
and then the rest is just inserting this corner, which means that it's not going to move anymore because it's the one behind the corner. So I'm gonna have orange here, and these, this is gonna be um, a diagonal checker pattern. So that was pretty easy to one look. And then the problem here was I was busy thinking about AUF and the algorithm because I'm very bad at this algorithm, but how I recognize it is that this white one's gonna go here or this yellow one's gonna go here, so there's no AUF, but I'm very bad at the algorithm because I just learned it. So that's it for this video. If you wanna learn more one look tricks, then you can check out the video on screen, which I talk about more than I do in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.